This is the Samsung Galaxy F36 5G disassembly. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and click on the notification bell so you'll be notified once I upload a new video. Also, if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Taking a look at the SIM and micro SD tray, there's a red rubber gasket around the opening. At this point, heat needs to be applied to the back plate using either a hair dryer or a heat gun to loosen up the adhesive underneath, and then a pry tool can be used to pry the back plate off. I prefer to use a hair dryer since there's less of a chance of damaging any of the components inside by overheating them. Here's a better look at the synthetic leather backplate. The camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off, so you don't have to take apart the phone to replace those. There are now 15 Phillips screws which need to be removed. The flex cable for the fingerprint scanner now needs to be disconnected. At this point, the plastic pry tool needs to be ran between the back housing and the frame of the screen to pop off the catches and release the back housing. The back housing is made of plastic. There's an antenna flex cable here and over here, and the NFC antenna is located here. Taking a look at the other side, we can see additional antenna flex cables around the board of the housing, as well as graphite film top transfer heat. The battery cable can now be disconnected from the main board, followed by the rest of the cables. And this flex cable connects the main board to the subboard as well as the screen cable. If you needed to replace the screen, you'd have to remove the back plate, the screws on the back housing, at which point you'd be able to disconnect the battery cable as well as the flex cable which connects the screen cable to the main board. You'd lift up and pry off the flex cable for the screen from the subboard, heat up the front of the phone where the screen is to loosen up the adhesive underneath, pry the old screen off, apply new adhesive, reapply the new screen making sure you run the flex cable back to the opening in the mid frame and reassemble the phone. The coaxial cable can be disconnected by just popping it off. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the main board. Taking a look at the main board, we can see the 8 megapixel ultra wide lens, the 50 megapixel primary camera, as well as the 2 megapixel macro lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The camera connectors can be disconnected by just popping them off. The LED flash is located here, and there's a secondary microphone on the top corner. The SIM and memory card reader is located on the other side, and we have a better look at the 13 megapixel front facing camera. The ambient light sensor is located here, and there's a graphite pad over the shield top transfer heat. Once the graphite pad has been peeled back, we can see a thermal pad which sits on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal pad removed. To remove the battery, there is a pull pouch provided to help you pry it off. This is the 5000 mAh battery.
Once the battery adhesive pouch has been peeled back, we have a better look at the vapor chamber which runs underneath the battery as well as the motherboard. There is a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard. Looking at the subboard, we can see a red rubber gasket around the charger port and the primary microphones located here. Here's a look at the other side. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom corner which is held down with some adhesive and the same goes for the bottom speaker which is on the other side. If you need to replace either of those just apply some heat and gently pry them off. The same applies for the earpiece speaker which is located on top. To replace the flex cable for the volume keys or power button just gently peel it off from the frame. There are also two liquid damage indicator stickers, one which is located underneath the sim reader on the frame and another one underneath the subboard. Now when it comes to accidentally inserting the sim ejector tool in the wrong hole, on this phone you don't need to worry since both the filters and the microphones are seated above the holes so they wouldn't get damaged. For the repairability score on this phone I give it a 9 out of 10. Now it's time to put the phone back together. Once everything's back in place, apply a new adhesive and reapply the back plate. Flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.